Hello, I'm Wang Xiaoxia, and it's a great pleasure to be here and share with you some of my thoughts about the issue of racism and oppression in schools. Well, upon receiving the email, I've done a lot of thinking and I've read the materials, and I have to say that this issue is a really serious problem and it's well worth us pondering. But let's start my presentation. There are mainly three parts in my presentation. The first is my understanding of the manifestations of racism and oppression in schools. And second, I will list some, some possible factors that may lead to the issue of racism. Finally, I will talk about my opinions about what we can do as social justice educators in our power to fight against the issue of racism and oppression in schools. Let's go back to the first part. Actually, there are three forms of violence. First is language violence, second, physical violence, and third, the violence of silence. Let's look at the first one. In the school environment, there are groups of students who like to make nickname for other students, and that, let's call these groups of students the dominant group, and the students who have been called nicknames and been discriminated the more vulnerable group. Some students from the dominant groups not only call nicknames, which are sometimes very offending and insultive of the students from the more vulnerable groups, they also call it aloud in public places. Not only do they call those names, they also write very bad language on the private things of the students from the more vulnerable groups. For example, their lockers and on their covers of their textbooks. Although there may be no visible damage done by language violence, I still think that the harm done by language violence is much worse than you know, those visible bruises. And now let's see the second form of manifestation of racism and oppression, that is physical violence. The students from the dominant groups sometimes beat the students uh, from the more vulnerable groups up and they just throw, throw their fists upon them. And uh, what's worse, this kind of physical violence always comes along with language violence. So I think that physical violence is the worst form of um, racism and oppression demonstrations. And actually, there is another form of violence, which I call it the violence of being silent because the exact number of students who actually throw their fists on other students or make nicknames of other students are comparatively small. Most of the students, when this kind of um, racist activity happens, what do they do? They just stand on the side of the aisle and watch the scene happen coldly and in silence. This, their silence is a sign that they have taken their stance as a racist because their silence is an acquiescence to the more and more rampant racist activities. So being silent already shows the student's stance of being a racist. And that's why um, the violence of being silent is also a form of racism and oppression manifested in schools. Having said so many different manifestations, how is racism and oppression in school formed? Well, I believe there are four main reasons. First is the negative influence from people around the students. Second, the stereotype. Third, historical factor. And fourth, the religious reason. As teenagers, students are very likely to get influenced from people who are close to them. Well, those people may be their friends, maybe their relatives, or maybe they're teachers at school. And if among those people there are some racists, then the students will get influence from them and then grow up and become a racist him or herself. Um, the second reason of, raci of racism is the stereotype. I believe that most of us have this kind of um, stereotype against other people from different cultures. Actually, here is an interesting image I found when I'm doing the research. 
here shows the different stereotype we all hold to different reg regions of the in the world. Actually, I have a friend. Whenever we talk about the African American students, she actually believes that they are more likely to steal things from others. I believe she is not the only one who holds such negative stereotype against you know, people from other culture. And that's why I think stereotype is another important reason that lead to racism and oppression in schools. Consider the period when America was in the great plantation economy. At that time, so many white people hired people from Africa to be their slaves to make um, economic profits for themselves. Such historical events has left so, so deep an impression on people that some of them still believe that they are superior than other people today. And historical factor and also uh, attributes to the formation of racism and oppressions in schools. Religion can also be a cause of racism and oppression in schools. Why is that? Uh, most of the people call the states the melting pot where so many different kinds of culture meet, and um, different culture just bring different kinds of religions. And when different religions meet, some disagreement may happen. And likely in the schools, when these kind of disagreement goes into conflicts, and when these conflicts goes to stream, um, I think racism and oppression may just happen. Having talked about the manifestations of racism and oppression in schools and how did they form. Now let's look at some solutions or some actions we as educators may actually take in our everyday life in to fight this serious problem. And actually, actually the material is very inspiring and I formed my ideas according to one of them. Um, I think being an educator, I have to play four roles at least. First is that I have to educate myself. And second, as a teacher, I have to educate others, of course. Um, third, I will also show my support and encourage those anti-racism activities. And finally, I will be the initiator of the anti-racism activities and the preventer of those racism activities. Actually, introspection is so important and sometimes be ignored by people. Let's look at this picture. What does it remind you? Actually, here is a very torrential river. And if we compare the current situation as this torrential river, then we as educators not only have to play this rock, we have also to go against the stream. And actually, I think that self-introspection is just the rock we have to rely on. Because before doing anything, we have to full-heartedly believe in it before we can do it well. That is why I will ask myself some questions every day when I become a teacher in the future. First, have I taken a firm stance? And second, have I stayed true to my words? Which means, have I proved myself through my action as a real anti-racist? And have I showed any support to the anti-racism activities? And finally, I will remind myself to be patient because racism and oppression in schools is a long existed problem. And it's not like a hundred race competition. It's like a marathon. So we as, a, as educators must be patient about it. As a teacher in the future, I have to educate others. And there are three things I think I have to pay most attention to. First is the language. By language, I mean the words and sentences I choose to use and the body language. Actually, there are many words and body languages that may be assaulted to another culture. And as a teacher, I will pay special attention to those words and body languages so that um, they won't feel insulted. And um, apart from language, I think I will also um, consciously take my teaching material and my teaching content. Sometimes 
most of the knowledge is from the textbooks written by Westerners. And I, as a teacher, will choose more materials from various cultural backgrounds. And uh, as an English teacher, I will also integrate the issue of racism and oppression in schools in my teaching. Finally, is the behavior. Because as teachers, we have to behave as anti-racist, not only inside the classroom, but also outside the classroom. And I believe that's the best way our students can learn from us. I will also show my support and encourage the anti-racist activities. And I think some incentive and reward can be very useful to help my students um, to go further in their anti-racist activities. But whenever there is any need for me to provide my advice and help, I will do so without any hesitation. But there is another group of people who you know, need our support even more. That is the vulnerable group. And the students who have been discriminated in school sometimes has their self-esteem damaged. And as a teacher, I will help them to re-establish their self-esteem or self-confidence first. And there is a quotation by the famous Ralph Ellison in his Invisible Man. I am an invisible man. I am a man of substance, of flesh and bone. I am invisible simply because people refuse to see me. I think these words are still true these days. Actually, there are some students from the more vulnerable side who are ignored by others every day. So as a, as a teacher and educator, I will provide plenty of chances for them to speak out and to tell us how they actually feel about having been discriminated against. And what's more important is that everyone should learn from them. And finally, I will be the initiator of anti-racism activities and the preventer of racists. In doing so, I think punishment is necessary because punishment helps us send a strong and clear message to those racist students that what they are doing is wrong and not allowed by the school. And a seminar and interest group is very helpful for the friendly discussion among students or even teachers. And I think cultural event and some movie book reading party is very beneficial for students to prove their understanding and tolerance. And I, as a teacher in the future, will hold some pre pleasant movie uh, parties or cultural event for the students to exchange their views about different cultures. Let me end my presentation by using the words of this famous politician, Charles Eden Hughes. He said, when we lose the right to be different, we lose the privilege to be free. And in this world, with the hope in our heart and with the action we take every day, I think in the future, the situation will be much brighter. And this is my presentation. Thank you.